Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse here, and I do apologize. I was hoping yesterday that we would be able to live stream Sony's State of Play event here today, especially, I totally didn't plan this. Um, <clears throat> you know, it just so happened that this week was finally the week that I was able to talk about my PlayStation 5 experiences uh, as kind of some of the NDAs and stuff had lifted for me to talk some about that and be able to actually cover the system and stuff on the channel. Um, because I don't think it was until earlier this week that we found out there was going to be a Sony State of Play event today. And I had planned on <clears throat> streaming it today, but then realized I had a work appointment at 3 o'clock, which was likely not going to be done before 4, uh, to which it was not. So I waited until, they said it would be about a half hour, so I waited a little bit after 4.30, and uh, it seemed to be la or done. And uh, we, I have not checked social media. I have not watched it. So instead of streaming it, um, you know, uh, kind of convenient timing, this came out during the week. I'm doing a lot of PS5 coverage. I have one more video for you guys tomorrow. But we are going to see what types of uh, surprises and announcements Sony has for us um, today. Really quickly, what do I expect? I pro I don't expect anything too major. Maybe a might like a oh maybe there'll be like a minor surprise. It'll be like oh this is out today or this week or something. You know something small. You know I think we're gonna see more things around May June when you get E3 and whatever summer of gaming whatever Jeff Keighley's gonna do again this summer. You know, that's where you're going to have the focus on, like, your big fall announcements type of thing. But, you know, the, people are having trouble getting the PS5. I wouldn't have mine if <laughs> I didn't luck into my uh, opportunity that I've had the last f couple of weeks, few weeks here. Um, so very grateful for that. But... Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of game. There's a lot of backward compatible PS4 games, and there are some really good PS5 games. Um, I do want to try to do a couple of videos for some PS5 content. But, um, you know, we're obviously looking for more, uh, especially exclusive games, or more shiny new games to take advantage of the new hardware. So, um, I do don't know if we'll get any more glimpse of God of War, Ragnarok. Um, my, I would bet they would leave that for, for later, but maybe they'll give us another, at least maybe they'll give us a short teaser or something with actual, you know, in-game, like a cutscene or something. Um, I don't know if they'll do anything for, like, an add-on to Spider-Man Miles Morales... There's been rumors of a Final Fantasy VII Remake PS5 update thingy. I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled something like that. And I don't know if they would be square being what they are and loving to charge for things. I don't know if that you know if they're gonna do that, if they're gonna charge extra for it and piss people off, or if they're gonna you know what they're gonna do with that. So we'll see if they see anything about that. I want a release date for Deathloop. That game just looks really cool. Like, I, I don't quite understand how it plays, but everything I've heard about it, like, it just seems different enough, and the art style is just really wild and out there that I just, I, I'm really genuinely curious to see what that's going to be, and maybe they'll, hopefully we'll get a release date for that. Um... I, honestly, I just want to find out more, like, surprises, because honestly, what else do they have? They've got Ratchet and Clank. Maybe we'll get to see some more gameplay of that. I know we've already had the release date. They did that a couple weeks ago, because uh, someone just might have already pre-ordered it. Um, Ratchet and Clank, maybe we'll get to see a little bit more, more gameplay. But we've seen a lot of that already, so I don't know. Um, what is that other one? Like, Returnal or something like that? I don't quite have an idea what that's supposed to be, but... I don't know. Let's see if we get some surprises. I've got the video loaded. I've got it paused. And let us 
go. Let's check out this uh, state of play. Got some PlayStation symbols bouncing around here. Let me turn up my headset here. Probably just the final countdown here. We got, oh, okay. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay. F okay. Huh? 15. I didn't even notice the timer on the upper left. Okay. Well, the beauty of watching this archived is we don't have to wait that 15 minutes, essentially. Uh, we can watch all these purdy little uh, PlayStation symbols for a little bit if we want. But I can fast forward this beast and start the show. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say. Um, you know, definitely check out the other videos if you have not done so for this week. I've done a kind of a hardware review. I've done a dashboard tour where you get to see the store, the accessibility features, how the screen reader works with all of it. Um, took a look at the PlayStation app, iOS app yesterday. Few issues there, but it comes in handy. And tomorrow to wrap up the week, we're going to take a look at the headset. Uh, we're going to look at the Pulse 3D headset that uh, I did. I purchased on my own. Um, but we'll take a look at that and uh, do a hardware review and let you know what I think of that. So, yeah, rather than waiting 15 minutes, let's just jump ahead. 12 minutes. I guess I should have anticipated this. Um... I didn't think to look, I didn't look at the upper left hand corner. Seven minutes, we'll just do a little fast forwarding like, down to five. I like their little symbols though, I kind of like them, I like the kind of blue and white uh, symbols they got going on here. Okay, we're down to three, two, one. And, all right, we'll uh, leave it at 15 seconds here. So hopefully it doesn't buffer. And then we're going to watch the state of play. Come on, Sony, give me something cool to play on my PlayStation 5. Here we go. What do we get? RP to teen. All right, no M-rated games. So, no God of War. <laughs> That's definitely an M-rated game. very unexpected developments in your future. Shocking events that will change the course of your life. Okay, that what last is... part might have been a hair dramatic. But there's lots of awesome updates and additions. Coming to the Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time experience oh, okay. on PlayStation 5. It's also out for other platforms, too. I'm here to give you the feature rundown of Crash Bandicoot 4 on PS5. That includes 4K at 60 frames per second, adaptive triggers, 3D audio, and more. Let's make this fun. Picking up where Crash Bandicoot It looks good. In Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. We but find the evil masterminds. I've heard it's really hard. Dr. Entropy escaping a once thought inescapable interdimensional prison, leaving giant <clears> holes in the universe. And I've never been that good at platformers. For Crash and his marsupial pals. We designed Crash Bandicoot 4 to leap off your screen, brimming with bold, vibrant environments and characters. It definitely looks Crash glowy. Bandicoot always looked pretty suave. But wait until you see him spinning heads in native 4K at 60 frames per second. All right. With the weight of the universe on your shoulders, and probably some errands to run, there's little time to wait on loading. Yeah, there's a lot of sparklies and shininess going on here. Adaptive triggers to your fingertips, so you can feel the blast of Neocortex's DNA-changing ray gun. Ray tracing. Or when you grapple a ton of hookshot. Hold on tight when you feel the boost of Crash's jet board, and really feel the suck when you vacuum his dingo dial. Yeah. Looking to get fully immersed in the Crash Bandicoot universe? I love this controller. Take it up to 11 and take your audio into an all-new dimension with enhanced 3D audio. Heck yeah! Achieving the infamous 106% completion is the sign of a true Bandicoot master. But should our genetically mutated marsupial lose his way, leverage PlayStation 5 activity cards to track your progress and hit your goals for things like time trials, flashback levels, 
in boss fights. Oof. Yeah, some and of that just looks really interesting but hard. Even bring your incomplete save over from the PlayStation 4 and you Oh, that's pretty handy to get to 106%. Oh, and one more thing. I wonder if, if they're going to the chart. Oh, here we go. Game, an upgrade option is available. Check out the PlayStation blog for full details. Uh, okay, so there's an upgrade pricing, but it's not free. There's no better time to experience <laughs> Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time on PlayStation 5. You know, if it's cheap enough, the upgrade would be worth it. Okay, March 12th. That's coming up within just a Welcome couple back, weeks. Crash. The gang's all here on today's new edition of State of Play. We've got some great updates lined up for you. Okay. First, let's check out the latest on an eagerly anticipated game coming to the PS5 console this spring from PlayStation Studios. Um, hey everyone, we at Housemark are excited to give what you is this sneak peek at Returnal. Oh, Returnal. In Returnal, I... you will play as Selene, an okay. extra scout who crash lands on an alien planet, Atropos. I think it's like a, a mysterious third signal, person thing. White Shadow. Players will explore this inscrutable, dark planet in search for answers and unfold mysteries, which may point to a larger force at play. Pretty dark. I think it's got some, like, roguelite elements or something. Your way above and around enemies is key to survival in return. Yep, third-person shooter, looks like. Got a dash. Shooting dudes. I like the big... I love the big reticle in the center of the screen. I love the targeting reticle. It's easy to see where you're going to aim. With the large variety of enemies and the vast number of unique movesets each possess, combat situations I can't tell no matter what the circumstances are. I don't know if there's a lock on or not. I can't quite tell. Or if it's just free aim. Every time you die and restart, the world will change. The map will be different. Enemies hmm. will appear in new locations and in differing numbers, so you have to think fast and adapt. Oh goody. Yeah, roguelite elements for sure. Lightning alt fire, which is great for crowd control. Cool. This is one Shiny. Of many alt fires that you can require in the game. Oh weird, it's like a pod. Explosions. You will stumble across mysterious devices that can grant rewards to the player. These will vary from weapons, consumables, and uh, tech sizes. Play style and make each cycle feel unique. Besides the intense combat, okay. The oh, here we go. Has a deep and engaging uh, narrative. We allow players to piece together the puzzle. That is if there's a lot of loot in here. As they venture deeper, I want to know what the tech size for like the inventory in that is. If it's going to be frustrating, what a lot of the UI is going to be like. I think I am reliving my memories in that house, but not fully. They're corroded. Some parts are missing; others seem manufactured. But I can remember the torment, feeling like I was losing my mind. There's no comfort here. No safe space. Okay. I like that they're showing a lot of actual gameplay. Okay, we're in a... Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what that building was, but okay, Returnal. When is that coming out? Returnal... Returnal lands on April 30th and oh, was developed okay. by the talented team at I was going to say it didn't show, but she said it, so thank Next you, lady. Let's take a closer look at a high impact new PS4 game called Knockout City. Oh, this was on. Um, this is on the Nintendo thing, wasn't Hi, it? I'm Josh from Bell and Studios. We're an indie I developer think, based in upstate. Because this is coming to the Switch, too. Knockout City. A team-based multiplayer action game for PS4 where rival crews settle their scores with epic dodgeball battles. Okay, yeah, okay, dodgeball. Knockout City is easy to pick up and play, but there's a lot of depth here for those who've got the skills. In our 1v1 huh. face-off mode, you'll go head-to-head -head in a constantly shrinking battleground relying on your reflexes and abilities to knock out an opponent. This could be kind of neat. catch powers up the ball, making it easier to land a hit. I can't imagine that you, have, that you can lock on. 
fake a throw to mess up your opponent's timing and knock them out before they can. I really wonder how this when controls. When you're in a spot with your way, a last-second dodge is the difference between getting knocked out and staying in the fight. Keep this... your wits about you and outplay your opponent to bring home a win. Huh. Looks kind of fun, actually. Let's jump into Team KO, our three v three mode. How easy are the teams to see? City. Like who is who? If your crew is outmatched, a well-coordinated team can still dominate. We're playing in Back Alley Brawl, a new map that you'll find in our upcoming crossplay beta. The special ball for this match is the Sniper Ball, which locks onto targets from far across the map and wham! Oh. Take them out before they have a chance to react. Beyond special balls, each map features a unique mechanic. In Back Alley Brawl, you can hop into a tube and make a quick getaway or use them to sneak up on your opponents. Oh wow, okay. Empty handed you can literally become the ball, a new weapon for your teammate. Uh -huh. Oh, that's funny. Be the, the ball. Remember that, you know, be the ball. High into the air with an ultimate throw and Gives it a whole new a meaning. Instant KO explosion. Okay, splody ball. The team here at Velen has been obsessed with building this world over the last four years. Uh, the team Knockout stuff. May 21st, and we'd love your help in our final stretch of development. May 21st. Rally your crew and sign up for our crossplay beta at knockoutcd.com to play early on PlayStation. See you I, soon, I, ballers. I just have a fear that, like, being able to tell which, like, being able to know who's on my team and, like, see people far away enough with all the colors and flashiness going on. It, it looks like a fun game. I just don't know new. how Here's easy I'll be able to see it. An upcoming PS5 game from the team at Slow Clap. PS5, okay, Slow Clap. I don't know, okay, what is this? Slow Clap. Got some painting. Or a picture, I mean. Okay, what are we looking at here? I have no idea what, what is this. Some kind of martial art thing? Ooh, what is this? Some kind of brawler. I think. It's almost like the fight scenes that you... Like, they're at different angles. Almost like, you know, you see those Netflix hallway fighting scenes. But it's got this sort of, like, cel-shaded or animated look. What is this? This looks cool. I wonder if you can use the environment. Yeah, it's definitely some kind of like punch and kicking dudes. S I F okay, S I F U. I don't okay. That was the debut of Sifu coming to the PS5 console later this year. Huh. Now let's get I am intrigued about. Ash, that looks cool. Epic new PS5 adventure from Heart Machine. Wait, what did she say that was? And later this year. Now let's get an update on Solar Ash, an epic new PS5 adventure from Heart Machine. Okay, I don't know anything about this. I, if they announced it already, I don't remember it at all. That's the beauty of watching this uh, not live. I can actually rewind if I need to or pause. Something. I already forgot the name of it. Something Slash. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Preston, creative director of Heart Machine. You Heart might know Machine. us as the team behind Hyperlight Drifter. Today, oh. I'm here to show you the first peak of gameplay for our new title, Solar Ash. Solar Ash, okay. I was off. Solar Ash is a huge, stylish Ooh. 3D platformer focused on speed, movement, and fluidity. But I suck at platforming. It's set inside a giant black hole known as the Ultra Boy which has been consuming everything in its path. I was hoping to be more like a 3D Zelda. Ray, a daring void runner who has decided to venture into this terrifying anomaly as a last ditch effort to save her home world. I like the Ray art style. Agile, able to speed across the world with abilities akin to skating. Cool. On the ashen clouds, she can quickly cover great distances in our huge world. Got some black goo, what is that? Okay. At its core, Solar Ash is a game about movement. And Ray has everything she needs to flow through the dangerous and unique world. Huh. A lot of air combat, kind of breaking little orb things or something. Like, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. As this you journey to save your planet, you'll find yourself face to face with grotesque and violent creatures. Our combat system is simple, fast. Really like the art style. Power players and encourage flow. 
it's As again it's really off. like enemy encounters will scale like flat cell exercises. flat shaded kind of thing some of these creatures require speed and precise but it's just speed. smooth as butter it is so smooth this definitely looks like it's running at 60 frames a second <coughs> Ray will eventually need to face the massive sentence of this void Big old, like, sneaky thing. That hold the key to her quest. Huh. Oh, wow. Okay. Just go ahead and ride it, or walk on it, and, like, cut it up. Damn, that thing's big. Okay. Solar Ash is Heart Machine's vision of the adventure platformer. The giant huh. spaces, the feel of movement, the flow of combat, and the high-stakes <sighs> battles atop enormous beasts... All I, to bring players something we think is incredibly unique, and more importantly, it fun. is. It's unique. I just don't know if I'd be any good at this it. This game is a labor of love for everyone on the Heart Machine team. Looks cool, We're though. Excited to bring Solar Ash to PS5 and PS4 later this year. Oh, okay. I love the fact that a lot of these games are going for style Your instead of realism games with these graphics. Scary games. Oh, do we get Resident Evil? Found you. Do we get Resident Evil Village stuff? You are small, pathetic. Oh, wait, no. Now, what is this? You are more. Are you ready? Oh wait. Oh man, is this cool 3D audio? Though I hear that clock on my left. There's definitely some cool audio going on. Watch this with headphones, you guys. Oh, this is some Five Nights at Freddy's crap. I've never got into those games. I think I briefly saw the first one. And... Just never got into the gameplay style. Yeah, this is definitely some... We can get you out of here. You and me together. Yeah, this... God, the audio is really good, though. They won't stop hunting you. None of them will stop hunting you. Watching this with head... Oh, wait. This is free moving. Holy crap. Okay. We have to get you out by morning. I don't think all the other ones are free moving. This... Oh, like a ball... Oh, cool. Ball pit. Do as I say. You will bring me what I want. And if you fail me, then you will. Both of you... I love the audio, and I'm kind of digging the like the art, and I like that it's free moving. Like it looks like it's a first person sort of survival thing. <sighs> I'd be more interested in this than there previous games, but I, I'm not caught up on all the deep lore <laughs> of the of the Freddy verse, as it will, as you will, but. That was a huh. new look at Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Up next, huh. let's take a tour of Oddworld Soulstorm. Oh, I forgot about this game. Hi, Puzzle I'm Platformer. Lanning, creative Director at Oddworld Inhabitants. Today, I'm going to take you on a brief tour of our newest game, Oddworld Soulstorm. They've always known you would come. Such weird know, characters. In Soulstorm, you reprise the role of Abe, accidental hero turned unlikely leader of an emerging revolution. As Abe's you Odyssey and Abe's Exodus. And wonderful environments in an effort to escape the all-powerful and eternally greedy Gluckens. <laughs> we really wanted to bring this world to life with what we call 2.9D. There's a lot of detail, but it almost looks like it'd be hard to see. This sense of connection is also reinforced through the use of the dual senses yeah. and feedback, as you'll now be able to feel Abe's heartbeat in high alert and suspenseful situations. Oh, interesting. Use of the, the controller, the vibration. There are That's well cool. over 1,000 fellow Mudokans that you must try to save along the way, but they are far more than helpless workers looking to be saved. When used effectively, you'll be able to solve puzzles, harness their combined energy, and be given the tools they need to fight alongside you. 
Hmm. And there will be times when the extra hands will be needed as you face off against an array of heavily armed enemies that will stop at nothing to find an N Abe once uh. and for all. Yeah, electrocute, zap him. In order to stand a chance against this much larger threat, we gave Abe the ability to scavenge, loot, and pickpocket items from his surroundings and use them to craft an impressive arsenal of his own that he can share with others. You can also play as a non-lethal pacifist or an agent hmm. of chaos. We wanted you to have the choice. Chaos. But there is one iconic ability for our shamanic protagonist, possession. This mystical power allows you to take control of your foes and use ah. their strengths and weapons against them, or you looks them to gain neat. access to paths still ahead. But with the puzzles, I think that I would have trouble the Oddworld seeing. Is in the first place, and this means that there are some environments and situations that require a little more thought, patience, and stealth. You'll find dark and dangerous caves, heavily guarded industrial sites, and ancient forgotten lands. Good graphic Here effects, we've though. Built lots of opportunities for you to test your skills and find different ways to handle things. It won't be easy. If being hunted by an huh. army backed by a shady and wealthy organization isn't bad enough, there are also more dangers in the forms of natural Ooh, obstacles, big rock. ancient traps, trials against swarming dark creatures. And industrial hazards that must be dodged. Ooh, spinny, and spiky thing. Ultimately, Abe's journey is one of hope, freedom, and truth. There is a rich and engaging narrative to discover in a world full of lies. Uh. And we've been able to bring our characters to life like never before. In true Oddworld fashion, your actions in game will decide the fate of Abe and all those you manage to liberate along the way. And we can't wait to see what you will do. I never got into these games back in the day, the PlayStation 1 and 2 days, and then like Munch's Odyssey came to the Xbox. That was a third person thing. But like, a 3D deal. But like, I don't know, the graphics are like kind of getting to the point where, like I said, with so much that background the detail. Soulstorm. And here's some exciting news active PlayStation Plus members will get the PS5 version for no extra cost starting in April. PS5 version oh, wow. for no extra cost starting in April. Okay, they're doing the Xbox thing, so if Moving even if I wanted on, to play it, I could play it with PlayStation Plus. Tina Bridge of Spirits, a gorgeous new adventure we last saw in the June oh. PS5 showcase. I forgot about this one too. This is like some other third. This one's more like a third-person Zelda kind of thing, I think. At least I remember seeing a little bit of combat or something, like melee combat. Oh yeah, those little dudes. Like I don't know what you call those little creatures. Maybe it's like a combination between Pikmin and Zelda? Huh? <laughs> They're like little puffy... I don't know what you'd call those things. Lots of good looking nature environments Rats here. Quite fond of you. usually timid. <laughs> Something tells me you did not come to our village looking for forest creatures. Yeah, little creatures. Hello, spirit. I seek passage to the sacred mountain shrine. Again, another kind of cartoony looking game, which I'm totally fine with. I'm all about a good art style over photorealism. That's why I want Wind Waker HD on the Switch already. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, there we get some third-person slashy-slash combat. Almost looks like something out of Beyond Good and Evil. Trapped spirits linger here. Tangled in the tragedies of our past. Huh. Must help these spirits if you wish to reach the right. I... I still don't... Quite understand. Is it primarily puzzles? Is it a lot of ah, okay? We got a bow or something. Seem seems really actiony, which is good. Like I don't. I'm I'm getting kind of a 3D Zelda vibe. Okay, climbing, slashing. Okay, gonna put a mask on.
Oh, that can't be good. Oh yeah, there's your big bad. You gotta end it with a big old monstrosity. Oh yeah, he's he's kinda big. There's a boss. I like is this open world? Is it linear? Wait, when is it? Shit, I didn't see. oh. August okay. Now let's settle in for a stylish Yeah, it seems like a good time for that. Loop. A PS5 first-person shooter developed by the team at Arcane. Yes, I want to learn more about this. What? You'll never ever break this loop. There's no never here. Look at Just the art style. And the rest of these maniacs. <laughs> Bring it, baby. <laughs> this is Ramblin' Frank's matinee. This little ditty goes out to the handsome. Tell us about some gameplay. Visionaries are ready to dance. Are you? A lot of story stuff. Yeah. This almost sounds like a James Bond theme. Yeah, it reminds me of like an opening James Bond credit roll. Damn good looking game though. Again, kind of got this, uh, uh, not, I, I don't want to say cell shaded, but really artistic style. I want this game to be good. I so want this game to be good. Deathloop. Doing some Matrix dodging out of the way, shooting dudes. Little bit of gunplay here. Bullet tracers, hourglass, yin yang kind of a deal. Meeting. Kill the dude. All right. Oh, there we go. Show some for okay. First person combat. There. Oh yeah. Oh, this looks... I want this to be so good. I, wa I so want this to be good. Man. Okay. I really would love a kind of a, a deeper dive overview of the gameplay. Like, I know you repeat, if you die, you repeat the day or something, and you're going after, like, a group of these other people, but I don't quite understand how the me a lot of the time mechanics work. Color me... Okay. Okay. Yeah, death loop. When are we getting that? If you okay, die again, die, die again. Huh? Before we leave, no release how about date. A huge update for one of 2020's most celebrated games. Mm, oh, no horizon either. Oh wait, what is the? Oh, menu fantasy. Okay. Yep. Okay, updating it for the PS5. This is what I was saying. I was I was betting they were gonna have something here today. Update for PS5. I have this. I got it on sale. Of course, I haven't played it yet. My growing pile of shame just mounts ever higher. Piles ever higher. And now I'll wait till this comes out if I want to play it. My name is Yuffie, I have no idea what's going on in this game. Operative for the new Wu Tai government will prove to our common enemy that Wu Tai is not to be trifled with. Members of Avalanche, we got this. 
Welcome back. Ah, there you are. Hmm. Someone's been expecting you. What took you? Sorry about that. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. I'm Sonon Kasakabe. Where's Clown? We lost him. You what? He will be okay though, right? Well, of course he will. They're the ones who blew up the reactors. Cool. Should we say hi? Yeah, all this story stuff means nothing to me. I've never played through the original. You gotta assume Shinra's on their tail. I tried back in the day. I tried playing it a little bit on PC. We gotta help. And the random battles just oh, turn-based and random battles just was not doing it for me. And I quit. A, I quit like a couple hours in, if that. Just not my cut. But the remake, it sounded like a, a more actiony combat, which I'm kind of intrigued about. I think you can pause for specials and things, but your basic hack and slash, I believe, is uh, it's actually more real time, if I understand it correctly. I mean, even look at some of the moves they're doing. I mean, it looks. But the Knights of the Old Republic games fooled me too. They do, but I'm not your sister. Because that was turn-based, but. It looked there you are. Who are these more real time. It just appeared. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, let the hunt begin. 6 10 21. Alrighty. Get down here, Bert. Cloud. Separate. That's all I know about Final Fantasy VII. Oh, and like Eris, like yeah. Spoiler alert, but Eris dies or something. That's all I know. That's the only thing I know about Final Fantasy VII. Everything else, not a clue. Oh, okay, they're doing comparisons now. Okay. Okay, PlayStation 4 is on the right. 5 is on the left. A lot more lighting. It definitely looks... Okay, yeah. Okay, and they're saying, like, fog effects, lighting. Oh, yeah, you can definitely tell the lighting looks... The ray I, I don't know if it's ray tracing, but it looks like there's a better contrast. Your dark areas don't look quite as dark because of the light that bleeds around the room or the air of the level. Huh. I mean, it looks good. Quality of life. Okay, I can't quite read all these things quick, but... Okay, there's some menuing there. Loading times. Oh, oh, okay, wow. I think they were going from a save file into the game. That's pretty fast. Photo mode. I don't really play with those, but, uh, you know, definitely people who do. All right, new episode, what? something. Okay, so there's actually some new content. I, I've got a feeling this is gonna be a paid upgrade. Especially if they're adding new content. Square loves to recharge for stuff. Okay, Final Fantasy Remake. Okay, PS4 to PS5, Arrow, that is free. I'm going to pause this. Okay, if you enjoy PlayStation 4. PlayStation 5 version for free. Okay, so I can get that. Uh, you can okay, enjoy. Oh, okay, your save data. Okay. 
Okay, new episode. Oh, okay. So, available for purchase. Okay. That's fair. You know what? That's fair. You buy an expansion or some DLC kind of a content. You know what? That's that was fair. The of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate coming to the PS5 console okay. later this year. And that's our show. We hope you're as excited as we are for what's to come wow. in 2021. See you next time. Okay, that was an abrupt. That was abrupt. <laughs> sure, okay. Um, well, there you go, guys. That is the state of play. Um, not bad. No real big surprises. I mean, I either knew... I think the only new game that I... Well, no, there was that platformer, that really stylish-looking platformer thing. I don't think I knew about that before. That one, and then that um, that weird, like, brawler game, um, Saifu or Sifu, or, I think. That was honestly the most intriguing thing to me, <clears throat> because I didn't know about it. And, you know, I've been on kind of a brawler kick lately, as you see my wonderful wallpaper there. Cobra Kai! Played through the PC version of that. Really enjoyed it, although I still have not beaten that final boss. Um, I mean, it looked... It wasn't just a left-to-right brawler. It looked... Like I said, it kind of had these like artistic angles. I don't know if it's like pre-rendered, like you know the old Resident Evil style camera angles. I don't know that I would like that. Um, but I mean, it looked like there was some gameplay there, and it looked interesting. I'm definitely, I definitely want to know more about it. It seems like something right up my alley, an action brawler kind of a thing. Like I said, it kind of reminded me with the angles that they were doing. You know, everyone used to joke when Daredevil started at the Netflix Daredevil series when they had those hallway fights. And then you had other series, uh, especially Netflix uh, comic book series. Um, they would kind of do that again. I think Jessica Jones had one. I think Daredevil Season 2 did. Um there was maybe one or two other ones, but kind of had that vibe to it. Um, otherwise, everything else we either knew about already or we suspected. Like I said, the Final Fantasy thing, we I'd been hearing stuff about that for a few weeks now. Like, thought it was going to happen. Um yeah, you know, like I said, I picked it up on sale just because, you know, I heard some blind, visually impaired people talking about it. Like, you know, it's not, there's not screen reader or anything like that, but, um, just it being more of an action-y take on it, I think it might be, you know, and full voice acting, of course, like, I think that will make it more accessible. There's multiple difficulty settings. So, you know, if I'm not into hardcore grinding and everything RPGs especially semi turn based battles I can you know just really drop it down and actually play through the story and then I have some semblance of an idea what everyone's been talking about for the past what 25 years now cuz I think Final Fantasy 7 that came out like was it 97 98 I think 98 um thought that was coming i really want to know more about death loop i really want to know mechanically <clears throat> like <clears throat> how the different runs go um you know when they were showing the, the sort of zipping around and flashing forward and shooting and that looked neat but i, I really want to know you know i know it's a first person shooter but i kind of i just want to know like some of like what 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 the overflow of the game is going to be. So that looks good. I don't know that we got a release date on that, though. I hope it's this year. I hope. I would imagine that it hopefully is, but looking forward to that. Uh, Returnal, I, 
I'm curious. Um, probably not going to be a day one purchase, but like I said in the video, I liked the giant aiming reticle. That was a nice thing to see. Third person, kind of a rogue light. You know, the the world resets when you die. New power ups, new enemies, new layouts. Third person instead of your typical side scroller that you've seen in a lot of things. As long as they're not kind of just boring level layouts, you know, that are just sort of like, oh, here's a couple um, preset rooms that they're going to put in there. Like, it, it could be interesting. Um, I'm, I am curious about it. Uh, what was the other bit that... The one that was kind of like Zelda, they had the little critters, like Pikmin Zelda. Um... Because there was the, the platformy one that I can't remember the name of. And then, but then, oh, what was the Zelda E1? I can't remember, but it, that one's another one until I find out specifically more, like, is it a lot of puzzles? Is it a lot of combat? Is it, <clears throat> you know, kind of a mixture? Are there like Zelda dungeons or is it more like you're controlling... They showed a lot of battles, but like those little critters that you see there, are is it like Pikmin where you control like an army of minions? I I don't know. Um, that's another one that I don't know that I'm going to pick up on day one until I learn more about it. But I like what I see. I mean, the art style is really good, and I like the the way the combat looks. So that could be another pretty good one. Oddworld, again, I don't know that I'm going to... I mean, I guess it'll be available on PS Plus if I, you know, because I did pick that up. Um, so I can play it if I want to. Um, but it's this puzzle platformer, kind of Lemmings-esque, you know, hey, save these little critters before they get killed. And, you know, again, kind of your Pikmin sort of a deal, but 2D or 2.9D, as they say in the video, but it's an interesting idea. I've never, like I said, I never played the original originals much. Uh, I think I played them briefly back in the nineties. Like I played the demo or something on PC. I think they had or a PlayStation or something. I don't remember where I played it, but just never really quite my thing, but it looks decent crash again. Um, that's on multiple platforms coming to the PS5. Kind of neat how they're going to do the trigger stuff. Again, if you have like Astro's Playroom, I love what they did there. So I want people to use those, especially like the haptic feedback and stuff of the controller. I want that to be more of a thing and not just a rare gimmick. Um, but yeah, I've heard that Crash game is pretty difficult even for, you know, Good gamers, you know, I'm not very good at, I love games, but I'm not necessarily all that good at all of them. Um, but Crash, oh yeah, and then there's that first person, like, free moving Five Nights at Freddy's thing. I don't know, like I said, I've never been into the, like, the, the series sounds kind of goofy, but just the sitting and waiting for jump scares just has never really been that much of a thing. Like, there was that boogeyman thing in VR, which was kind of a spin on that. Which in VR it was kind of neat, um, but not something that I do for want to do for like a long period of time. But just being able to like move around and around this uh, whatever it is restaurant. You guys, I saw the ball pit, the hallways, the different animatronic characters. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that I'll check it out, but I'll at least you know keep an open mind on it. Um, I think that's pretty much what they showed. I think I've remembered everything. Not a bad showing. You know, we got a lot of release dates. We've got, um, I think we got one thing in March, got a April or May thing. We got a June. We got actually, we got a couple of June things because I know that's also when, uh, when, um, Ratchet is coming out. We got an August, 
so yeah we got a few things scattered throughout and i'm curious what they're going to announce uh later this spring or early this summer um so yeah hopefully we get some good exclusives uh, that we don't know about uh, learn more about god of war horizon and all of these things you know they're not specifically mentioning but i'm just curious if any of these games are going to support accessibility features at all like even that final fantasy thing like i i would love for them to be like oh we pulled a spider-man miles morales yeah we're gonna uh add not just graphical updates but maybe add some accessibility features i'm not gonna hold my breath but it would be great to see you know how they put those retroactively or they put them into the remake of the uh ps4 game of spider-man so I'd, I'd love to see something similar for Final Fantasy. You know, even if it's not fully text-to-speech, just something that would be helpful. Um, yeah, that is the State of Play event for February, guys. Sorry I was not able to do it live, but hey, you know what? Work, gotta pay the bills, man. Gotta pay the bills, you know? Um... But that'll do it for this video. I think that's pretty much it. Um, during the update video that I did recently, um, shortly thereafter, they did announce uh, this Blizzard collection. I, ta I said that there was going to be a BlizzCon, but I had no idea that they were going to revive and do a remaster of Rock and Roll Racing. Hell yeah! That is out. I have played it. I have beaten it on rookie difficulty on the Switch. Might go back and play it on the next one. <clears throat> but yeah. Good game. Glad. And I can have that in portable form. Awesome. Sounds like Tony Hawk 1 and 2 is also coming to the Switch. So again, having a fully 3D playable... I, I just hope the frame rate and everything is solid enough on it. Um... That is going to be coming to Switch as well. So, might have to be looking at that. Uh, just, you know, again, play classic Tony Hawk levels to go. to go. Yeah. Heck yeah. Bring it. Um, so, that's the gaming news for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry I didn't do it live, but we'll get this up here for... Uh, the PS5 week continues. One more video for tomorrow. And then Saturday we will return to regularly scheduled programming and slow down a bit. So like the video if you did. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. Twitch.tv slash Illegally Cited. IllegallyCited.com. And right here on YouTube. Until next time, chat with you guys again later.